This is a book review of Nudge. We are accessory to success and we review a lot of business books here. We have an email newsletter we send out once a week with a lot of information about business books for entrepreneurs and writers of this kind of stuff. If you like consuming this kind of content, you might consider subscribing to that. There are a lot of other book recommendations in this review and you can find links to all of those in the blog post. Now let's move on to the main takeaway from this great book. People usually know what is good for them, yet they make irrational personal and economic choices anyway. Why? The nudge theory says it is because people rely on their automatic system, the source of gut reactions, and often have weak reliance on the reflective system, the thinking system. If people learned to question their automatic responses before making decisions or choices, their lives would improve. For government policymakers, marketers, and even parents, nudges can help people make better choices. Nudge theory combines psychological factors and conventional economics to develop behavioral economics to identify the government nudges rather than enforcement actions that help people make choices for personal and societal benefits. Here are some bullet point takeaways of what you'll learn in this book. Difference between the automatic system and the reflective system. The heuristics of anchoring, availability, and representativeness the related biases emerging from heuristics due to interactions of the automatic system and the reflective system, the difference between traditional economics and behavioral economics, choice architecture and how it leads to nudges, an understanding of what is a nudge and how it influences people, a nudge theory, it focuses on designing choices based on how people really think and not based on how it is believed they think, Various concepts influencing people's thinking like framing, the measurement effect, feedback, channel factors, and much more. Examples of how nudge theory is applied and private and public decision making. Now let's move on to the main summary. The book Nudge, written in 2009, begins by describing the automatic system and the reflective system. The simplest description of the automatic system is that it is gut feeling or a gut reaction and does not involve conscious thinking. The gut reaction and feelings come from the oldest part of the brain in terms of evolution. The reflective system is deliberate, self-conscious thinking and comes into play when doing things like math, deciding a trip route, and assessing situations. The authors Richard Fallon and Cass Sustein explore whether people can rely more on their automatic systems to make life easier and better, but without getting into trouble. Nudge shares a 1974 research program developed by two Israeli psychologists identified three heuristics of rules of thumb and how they can lead to systematic biases. The three heuristics are anchoring, starting with something you know and adjusting, Availability, assessment of likelihood of risks being real influences on private and public decision making and risk related behaviors. And representativeness, stereotyping, finding patterns that do not exist. Anchors are also mentioned in the book Epic Content Marketing because information presented first impacts follow up decisions by treading on people's anchors. The heuristics account for many biases influencing decisions, assumptions about people, unrealistic optimism or fear, hope, overexperience, etc. The representative heuristic is particularly harmful because decisions are made based on stereotypes of people, events, conditions, etc., i.e., tall black men are more likely to be basketball players than Jewish men or a booming stock market leads to rash investing because the reality of an up and down market is not taken into consideration. The book then proceeds to discuss behavioral economics versus conventional economics. In economics, people are assumed to have great perception and self-awareness, which leads to the best decision for themselves. Behavioral economics assumes people can make irrational decisions and mistakes, especially when the choices are lacking in feedback mechanisms complex and or rare. Humans have more fear of experiencing a loss than they are happy about realizing a gain. This is how people get stuck in the status quo, like setting a 401k allocation once and then never changing it, even when aging or retirement goals change. Framing plays a role because how an issue is contextualized dramatically influences decision making. For example, a doctor says of 100 patients who agreed to this operation, 90 are still alive five years later versus of 100 patients who agreed to this operation, 
10 are dead five years later. The positive version leads to a much greater number of people agreeing to an operation. People's perceptions matter. One of the premises in the book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Mindlessness is often the source of temptation, something we cave into on autopilot. For example, Nudge shares studies that have shown the more popcorn people are given, the more they will eat. Through temptation is most often thought of in terms of food, it can be mindless routine action in any situation. It could be said that the book The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is about overcoming mindless action and seeking to understand personal behaviors in a deeper level. On the other hand, behavioral economics recognizes that people are heavily influenced by peers. They have decisions or like something because of other people and humans want social approval. Using these kinds of principles, Thaler and Sustine address the fact that humans often make bad choices that they would not make if they had another chance. In libertarian paternalism, policymakers and private companies are choice architecture, which refer to the way choices are structured and presented to move people towards making the most beneficial choice. The use of choice architecture creates nudges, which are subtle hints or influences that drive choice. Nudges are the heuristic tendencies in people. Nudge theory addresses the design of choices which influences the choices made. It proposes that designing choices should be based on how people instinctively and sometimes irrationally think and decide, rather than on how leaders and government policymakers believe people decide logically and rationally, an often incorrect belief. Nudge theory strives to better understand and manage heuristic influences on human behavior. There are numerous stories in the book, The Tools of Titans, that demonstrate successful people thoughtfully manage their habits to their benefit, from the first actions taken in the morning to high-stakes negotiation tactics. To get people to change and make better choices, indirect encouragement and enablement is used as opposed to enforcement and direct instruction. This is a nuanced principle in the book Developing Leaders because it says that leadership training should not just point out current problems, a form of enforced change, but rather provide workable solutions and help leaders link company objectives to company strategy. Counting calories is an enforced change while using a small plate is a nudge. Putting up signs that say fines for littering is enforced while adding more litter bins and making them more visible is a nudge. Another way to look at nudge theory is that choices are designed for people to encourage positive beneficial decisions. Nudge theory can also be used to reshape or redesign existing choices and influences developed by governments, corporations, and other leaders. Nudge theory is based on psychology and economics, so it is integrated with these things like leadership, change management, personal development, motivation, ethical business, motivational theories, and so on. Enforcement frequently leads to resistance and confrontation, whereas nudge theory strives to minimize these kinds of behaviors. Nudge theory applies to marketing, business, parenting, government, policymaking, and communications. For government leaders, it is an approach for changing people's behavior by designing and offering free choices, so their decisions are more likely to produce helpful outcomes for the people and society. One of the principles in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is to talk in terms of other person's interests. Finding the right nudges applies to this principle and many others. There are many interesting examples of nudges in the book. One of the ones mentioned is the fly in the toilet. The cleaning staff at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport painted a small house fly on each urinal in 1990. Men could urinate wherever they wanted to in the urinal, but when given a target, undesirable spillage decreased by 80 percent. In another example, more people save for retirement when automatically enrolled in a retirement plan and given an opt-out choice versus no automatic enrollment. Nudge is jam-packed with psychological and behavioral concepts like elimination of aspects, collaborative filtering, and the measurement effect. The measurement effect concerns how the measured intentions affect people's conduct, i.e. asking people what they intend to do. For example, do you intend to XXX in the next six months? After they answer, ask when and how they intend on doing it. These are what Kirk Loom called channel factors which can facilitate or inhibit certain behaviors. 
This approach would be useful to the development of a self-management sales team proposed in the book Predictable Revenue. The question posed would be, what sales level do you intend to meet in the next 6 to 12 months? The events related to COVID-19 pandemic are very recent examples of the difference between enforced change and nudges. The government assumed most people would want a vaccine, and instead, many states are struggling to get beyond 30% of their population vaccinated. Instead of ordering people to get a vaccine, nudges were developed. One of the offers to vaccinate was a lottery. Get a vaccine and get an entry into the lottery. Remember, the fear of loss is greater than the happiness of gain. By not getting a vaccine, a person loses the opportunity to win a million dollars. One of the best features of the book Nudge is that it gives real-world, everyday examples people can relate to. However, the morality of using influence is still questioned by many scholars and that issue is not addressed in a significant way. The book Influence explores the psychology of why people say yes and how to defend against unethical influence attempts. Nudges are influences, so what stops their use for unethical purposes? However, the idea of the nudges people experience every day makes an interesting self-examination of personal decision-making processes. About the author, Richard Thaler. Born in 1945, American Richard Thaler studied at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, and then attended the graduate school at the University of Rochester in New York, where he earned a doctorate degree in 1974. He worked first at the University of Rochester and became an assistant professor and then Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. He remained at Cornell Business School for 18 years. In 1995, Thaler began working at the University of Chicago and is now the Charles R. Walgreen Distinguished Pre Professor of Behavioral Science and Economics at both schools of business. Thaler began his prestigious career beginning in the 1980s with his multidisciplinary work analyzing economic decision making. His first notable behavior economics paper was, quote, Towards a Positive Theory of Consumer Choice, which was written in 1980, followed by An Economic Theory of Self-Control, published in 81, and a series of papers over the years. He met and worked with a number of graduate students and now famous economic analysts. These people had enormous influence on his career and pursuit of a new line of study in human economic behavior. His work was unique in that he combined economic decision making with psychology and behaviorism. He calls the University of Chicago the spiritual home of law and economics. He says that writing the book Nudge changed his life. In 2015, he was president of the American Economic Association. In 2017, Thaler was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. In 2018, Thaler was elected a member of the National Academy of Sciences. He is also a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and a fellow of the American Finance Association and Econometric Society. Richard Thaler has written a number of books which are geared towards the lay reader rather than scientists. They include The Winner's Curse in 1991, Advances in Behavioral Finance, Volume 1 in 93 and Volume 2 in 2005, Quasi-Rational Economics in 91, the co-authored book Nudge in 2009, and Misbehaving in 2015. He has also published more than 90 papers. Putting his principles into practice, Thaler co-founded the Fuller & Thaler Asset Management Firm. He has served as the co-director of the National Bureau of Economic Research and Behavioral Economics Project and helped establish the Behavioral Insights team. Richard Thaler is active on Twitter and Facebook. There are also many YouTube videos of his interviews and lectures on a variety of topics. Co-author Cass Sustine is born in 1954 in Conrad, Mass and is the nation's most cited legal scholar in fields that include constitutional law and administrative law. He is also recognized as an expert in behavioral economics. Sustine graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from Harvard College in 75 and earned a law degree from Harvard in 78. He served as law clerk, first justice for Benjamin Kaplan of the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court from 78 to 79, and then Justice Thurgood Marshall for the U.S. Supreme Court in 79 to 80. From 2009 to 12, Sustine was the administrator of the Office of Information and Registry Affairs for the Obama administration. He is currently the Robert Walmsley University Professor at Harvard and the founder and director of the Program on Behavioral Economics and Public Policy at Harvard Law School. 
In 2018, Sustain was awarded the Holzberg Prize for the Government of Norway. In 2020, he was appointed to the World Health Organization as chair of the Technical Advisory Group on Behavioral Insights and Sciences for Health. Sustain is a prolific author and has published hundreds of articles and dozens of books. In addition to co-authoring Nudge, he wrote the book Simpler, The Future of Government, The Ethics of Influence, Republic, Impeachment, A Citizen's Guide, The Cost-Benefit Revolution on Freedom, Conformity, and many more. Cass is found on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and also has a number of YouTube videos in which he discusses a variety of topics, like the interview he did with a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. This is a book review of Nudge, and I hope you enjoyed it. There are a lot of other book recommendations in this review. You can find links to all of those in the blog post. Don't forget to subscribe to our email newsletter. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next review.